This is Amaria Sweet with Heart Mind Expressions. And today I've got a really special treat. We've got a great round table here with some amazing people. Dr. Alex Bloom. We've got Alex Spielman, Patrick Riley, Rumors of Instinct, 1987, and Sue McClure. So we've been discussing some geopolitics, a lot of the hubbub that's been going on. And now we've kind of discussed uh, where we're going here. What did you guys want to start with as far as, um, I know we've got like the connection with the Vatican, with the servers. Um, do you guys want to start with that and go from there and kind of connect the Vatican with the Pope and the servers and everything? Do you want to kind of rock and roll with that one? Yeah, let's start looking at that one. Yeah, that's actually kind of interesting. Uh, so um, last week, or was it, actually, was it this week? We got a sworn statement from a gentleman uh, who supposedly was working for the Italian government uh, with the Lenardi satellite and stated that the uh, election information went through their satellites as, as it went through Europe. Uh, now, what's interesting about the Lenardi satellite is that it's actually owned by the, by the Vatican itself uh, and it was being rented to Italy. And so uh, ever since that came out, we've seen rolling blackouts all over Europe. Uh, there has been a, an alleged claim of the Pope being in custody. Apparently the Italian government is in complete collapse mode. Uh, and we've also seen dis uh, disappearances or announcements of many, inter uh, uh, many world leaders uh, stepping down. Some shape or form are not making their appearances uh, all over the place. Now, yeah, we've been seeing a lot of holograms of people. Or Italy is also experiencing the large, or having the largest mafia trial with 350 uh, uh, incarcerated mafiosos captured this past year. Uh, that's also something to add to it. You know, everything mm -hmm. everything counts in small amounts, and I think right. this might have something to do with it because. Um, Interpol recently has been given the license to perform um, capital punishments or at least, uh, you know, have lethal force in their apprehensions, which is something that if you follow Interpol, they never really have had the chance to do. They don't, they, they can't really resort to uh, violent takedowns like the U.S. Marshals could, for example, you know, like if you, if you really think about it, like they didn't have the license to kill. And now, now the Interpol kind of has, uh, the uh, gloves off, if you were, mm -hmm. for your persecutions of international uh, human trafficking. I know that there was a massive blackout over in uh, Pakistan. I think it was like 30 or 40% of the entire country went dark. Uh, apparently the reason for it had to do with General Electric and um, because General Electric, is one, uh, General Electric is one of the big three when it comes to uh, systems and uh, parts for the United States military. And they were going to uh, sell uh, either a, uh, whole, a major share or the entire company, I forgot exactly which one, to China. And besides uh, General Electric, you also have like Rolls Royce as well. But when it comes to majority of the uh, parts it comes from General Electric so they would have a massive uh, control of not just military hardware but also a big controlling uh, share of uh, telecom here and it wouldn't be through clandestine way uh, means through like Hawaii it would actually be direct control through uh, telecom companies uh, financially which would I think, then, as we carry that forward, would mean that all of the Chinese jets would have the same GE engines that ours have. It does, actually. The, uh, the current stealth fighters that the Chinese uh, Air Force uses are very similar to the Raptors that we use, except they are underpowered and underarmed. So, um, 
it's one of those things where it's like made in China. It looks like the same, but they have a, a lot of massive side of, uh, side effects due to the fact that they are not, um, um, you know, homemade designs. And that's why we're going back to the drawing board and trying making everything ourselves. Right. Or at the very least, take out the not so good parts if we can. Well, the main reason why China's doing a lot of this stuff in the first place is due to the fact that they are literally shutting down. Their entire country is shutting down. They do not have the supplies. That is why this is the re that is very much the same reason why they had the Falkland Island Wars back in the 80s. It's because um, I think it was Argentina, which is fall, their country was collapsing. And now uh, China is doing very much the same thing. And the main reason that they're falling apart is because there's a, so there are semiconductors, they have run out of their supplies. And so what they're doing is they're trying to go after Taiwan because they have the next generation semi. Uh, yeah, well, they're actually going, they're, yeah, they're going after people that actually owe them. Kind of like, you know, the countries yeah, who that's owe what me, they do. you're going to, you owe me, you're going to work for us, or you're going to owe up to whatever we need you to do to kind of bail us out. I mean, it's, it's a weak move, actually. Mm -hmm. I kind of disagree. It's a, very, it's a, it's a work. The viability of a GE uh you know like the, the kind of jet fighters the ge trade the ge sell because our technology is now mm -hmm. moving into things like anti-gravitics electro uh, gravitics like the tic tac like um you see this might be just because ge actually doesn't have a stake in this anymore at least not that division and department kind of like even though we're selling them stealth technology it's because we can operate hypersonic jets now Thus, mm -hmm. you don't even have to be in someone's radar space for more than a few seconds. Yeah. Um, you have to think like 25 years, what, what technology 25 years generally is a window. So if China is, for example, still catching up with us when it comes to, you know, the F-22, you know, then that kind yeah. of puts them like uh, recently there was an article on the Military Times or um, I did a video on it where America listed out their assets, their military assets. And it was kind of done in a way that was like a, a government speak in 1984, where they're like, oh, China's a very dangerous threat. They have all these missiles and here's where they are. Showing that America mm -hmm. has complete intelligence supremacy. Like we know exactly the enemy that we're dealing with when it comes to them as a trading partners, because we're, we're kind of like, cooperating with them to create this military industrial conspiracy that is going to be the new mm -hmm. cold war 2.0 like mm -hmm. we were we were you know having an arms race arms race with russia and mutually assured destruction but at the same time cooperating with like their, their weather bureau and you know cooperating mm -hmm. with them and like chess games and stuff like that like mm -hmm. it's all theater yeah and china's economy is completely tanking they're yeah they're become not so dependent on us for everything that now that our economy is going crappy. They're yeah, they tied right to, to us. feed themselves since Mao Zedong. Right. <clears throat> A like, billion exactly. people. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like the Mao Zedong turned on them. Step forward, you know, starved 80 million people. Jeez. And then they opened the trade doors to Nixon and Carter. Uh, the communist Chinese threat has been over exaggerated you know china as a threat has been over exaggerated Did you know the united states was the first foreign power to conquer beijing uh, yeah the that whole rebellion. story is fascinating the boxer rebellion yeah yeah america has been literally dominating china for over 100 years mm -hmm. like that that that's something that they'll never tell you is that china is basically a vassal state for the united states in, a, in many many ways and that this whole <laughs> tension between uh, China and its its allies or its its neighbors is specifically to kind of create Cold War 2.0. Yeah, and they're <laughs> terrified. They're supposed to be getting audited like we are, and they aren't doing it either because there's a lot of rumors that they have two sets of books, the public books, that they show everyone in the real books where they're basically their economy's trash. 
I don't agree with me. Chinese uh, at all at any kind of given point. It's not the communist Chinese, like the people. I love the people that. Yeah, people are wonderful. It's yeah, the people the are wonderful. CCP. But they're persecuting like the Chinese, the Fu Yang Gong, yeah. anything where people are starting to kind of think for themselves or work for kind of like their own good. They stamp out, and you have to understand mm -hmm. that this is a type of cultural suicide on their part. I think specifically to limit the real uh, power of the Chinese country. And I believe that their population is actually over exaggerated. I don't believe that they have as many people as they do. I believe that they use that as a type of, uh, like I said, social credit, like a form of fraud. Mm -hmm. well, I, think, I think when they even mention how many people are on the face of this planet, I don't think there's yeah. two either. And they didn't even count the ones that are underground on top of all that. Well, We're like still you at can't the count. end of the day. We're not overpopulated. Yeah. We're, We're not running out of space. We're not running out of room. Yeah. We're we horrifically don't have this, managed. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or so, like the, 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 the mindset, right? Of how they yeah. want global domination, how they want to kill 90% of the population, yeah. et cetera. Mm -hmm. Or cattle, well, like, you know. Yeah, like the, the idea of the Methuselahian uh, fallacy where people are, are overpopulating and we're running out of natural resources. So we have to limit our population to keep up with a balance or an equilibrium makes absolutely no fucking sense in reality. Right, it's crazy. People are agricultural mm -hmm. and we produce food as our population needs it according to our technological ability to do so. We <laughs> have mastered sustaining populations healthily since the ancient world. So you're telling me they had enough grain in ancient Rome, but we don't have enough grain in the modern world? <laughs> yeah. Planned obsolescence. I learned about that in my technology class in high school. So a fun story about uh, Edison and, and Ford and all them. When Ford first came up with the Model T, he created it so perfectly that it was literally designed so that every household could have one and each part and piece could be replaced directly at the hardware store. Belts could literally be replaced by your belt. But then he realized that if he did that, he was going to sell everyone one car and they would be able to replace it themselves and he was out of the job. That's when they designed the idea of planned obsolescence where things break down on purpose directly, usually right after the warranty. Yeah, the first Model T, in fact, was even poverty. made completely on hemp and hemp-based products. And Edison <laughs> and all those said, no, that's not the way we're going with all this stuff. You need to back off on that and use oil because JP Morgan is doing the oil stuff. Same thing with like above ground power lines and Tesla and Edison and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's it's all designed on purpose, but people don't want to hear that, that we could have been free of all this stuff generations ago. Everything we've been told is a lie and yeah. literally nothing that we're offered or given to work with is, you know, the best we have, the best we'll ever have or, you know, in any kind of capacity. Right. And you're right, like well, Orgone. Yeah. The, the, you know, the, the alternative powers, zero point energy, you know, things like electrographics. These were real discoveries made by real people in the, ter the Industrial Revolution. It's in newspapers. Tesla was not the only one. The Wright brothers were not the only one working on these things. You know, like there's not just, oh, I'm Edison and there's literally no other human being in America working on electricity. It's not like there are thousands of thousands of discoveries and inventions that are kept secret. Uh, mostly through the patent office or the the clever, exactly, manipulation of the education system. They were inventing death rays in the uh, 1890s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, look at Byrne all the backstories that they were putting in, how certain inventions came about, and even half mm -hmm. of them were from, you know, uh, star people, ET neighbors, as to put it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like the Velcro. You know, and things like that. I mean, a lot of the stuff came from all kinds of other places. We were trading back then. We weren't just trading spices. We were also trading knowledge and technology, and as, as, including how the stars play out and how, you know, the planet works and everything. All that was being traded, information and knowledge. Yeah, there is a, there is a global and ancient world trade uh, that it's not top secret but they don't want the common person to even think about it because it'll confuse them right like i live so to kind of get back on topic i know we've talked about um you know like the connection to the vatican and everything um what about 
we were talking a little bit earlier about the blackouts that have been going Gulf on. Coast of Texas. They feel so like are you guys getting it that it's breaking up? <laughs> I guess <this. laughs> there we go. So um just to kind of get back on topic, um, what about like the blackouts and the stuff blackouts. that's been going on? Cyber war. Right. Did you guys want to talk about that a little bit? Alex, do you have details about the blackouts in um, in Rome? Well, the, the uh, from what I've heard, it had to be connected to what happened in the Vatican. Allegedly, the prime minister was, I think it was either the prime minister or the president was arrested and uh, seized by the Italian uh, mili the mil Italian, mil Italian military in connection to the Lenardi satellite. And since they didn't want to alert the local press and other people that would be able to spread the news about that operation, they blacked that out, they blacked out the entire country, mm. or at least that particular area of that country. Now, what are your thoughts on the picture that came out recently with supposedly, my understanding is the Italian president was arrested with Pompeo in the picture? Does anyone know if that's been confirmed, mm -hmm. if that was him? That's a really good That question. was what I was referring to, yes. Okay. But if, I, if I have not been able to confirm it personally, but it, it's looking that way uh, if you, when you start diving into it, it there's, there are certain details that you just can't confirm at this moment, at least not, nothing I found, but it's leaning towards that way though. Yeah, well, they're actually going harder on the censoring, making it harder for any of the Yanans to dig. Oh. They're literally, the, and then, I mean. And then you're running, and then yeah. around the time, you're also dealing with uh, blackouts Around uh, around that same period of time, between uh, Germany and Paris, and I think there was a blackout in London at one point. And now we're and now right now we're dealing with some blackouts in the West Coast of the United States. I know, like last week, we had a blackout here in Pocatello. I was amazed, but just in the middle of our gaming night it hit us twice in that night and we could hear my kids were hearing like honking horns i was out i was so tired but they're like yeah it sounded like people were honking and screaming and so it's i don't know if you guys are having anything like that in your areas um have you guys noticed anything oh I, uh, like right because i know alex well, you're over that... are you down south right now um or are you out west still I'm in Portland right now. Are you right now? So what, how's Portland been? Um, it's been good. We've had, at least at my house, um, we've had a, the past two or three nights flickerings. Um, really? Kind of later at night, we've had some windstorms. Oh. And so I don't know if that's just a natural repercussion of like the power kind of being precarious and almost going out or if it's <laughs> something deeper than that. Well, I noticed that the storm front has been moving a little weird because I'm used to watching a storm front go from, you know, uh, north to south when you want to talk about cold fronts, you know, and say, mm. say we're getting stuff from Canada and it'll come down to us. Lately, it's been going from west to east. Well, we have had very the pole interesting. shifts. Mm. Yeah. The, what is it? The well, Inuits the, have talked about the, the pole shifts and I've even noticed just it's weird where the sun yeah, it, it, is it, going. The storm's around. playing out in a different direction than right. we, we used, to, used to seeing it when they talk about it. Um, right here in St. Louis, I'm central, central United States. So here in St. Louis, uh, we just recently got a little bit of snow, a little bit of ice rain, and that's kind of it. The day before that, it was uh, in the 50s. So the weather keeps going bouncing so between 50s, 20s, 30s, back to 50s. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah crazy. it's not consistent. Well, it could be part of HARP and the chemtrails too. We're still being we've been dealing that's what we've been dealing with over in the northeast um yeah. I'm, I'm in the new york metro i'm um, an hour away from new york and an hour away from philadelphia uh they were saying that we were going to get snow today about a week ago and we were going to get maybe an inch 
Uh, it is currently 53 degrees, and it was just lightning a few seconds ago. Wow, that's crazy. we were supposed it, that's we were supposed to have a nasty uh, storm front come through, and everything just went north. I don't think I've seen a well, rainstorm go fa as fast as I saw that go through. I was out in and out within 15 minutes. Now, how, how far, Patrick, how far are you from, uh, from Alex I'm, Gilman? I'm on the Canadian border of Vermont. It's actually right on the 45 degree latitude line. So it's right between the equator and the North Pole. Um, and we've had a really <laughs> mild winter ourselves yes. this year. Um, it's been uh, freakish, actually. We have almost no snow accumulation, which is uh, absolutely destroying. Well, I mean, it doesn't destroy our mountains. They make snow anyway anymore. But yeah. It, it's, yeah, a big part of our tourism is snow and stuff. We just haven't had it. Like, it's not even really good snowmobile weather and stuff. And by this yeah. time of the year, it usually It's even warm snow. here, too. So. Now you're... Patrick. Yeah, usually Patrick, where you I, are, Patrick, think... by now you should be shoveling your, your pets out of the snow and stuff <laughs> like that. Oh, yeah. Usually we call pet yeah. deep or whatever. Patrick, <laughs> I think the, la the last time we actually had snow, at least here... And I know uh, you guys probably got stuff upstate uh, um, would be actually around Christmas time. We had a, right. that massive snowfall around Christmas. Yeah, you guys and got a lot I haven't, yeah. seen, snow, I haven't nice. seen snow since. Right. Really? We've had little dustings and it's as much rain as it is snow, which is really weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just had a dusting just, earlier today and it melted. So. And it's been pretty yeah. unseasonably warm down in Corpus Christi as well, hasn't it, Mike? Or, uh, excuse me. Um, it's always Doesn't warm. It, rumors. It's always warm. It, it actually is kind of par for course. It's actually more surprising when it gets cold. Um, and I kind of feel yeah. like uh, pretty, pretty lucky about that, I guess, because I've also lived where it is cold, you know, and experienced real winters, and I really, really don't like them. So it's like so, I'm not a big fan of, of, of I don't think anything so below the light. This could be maybe retaliation from the cabal. Do you think that they're just trying to throw everything at us that they have? No, just uh, we said polar shift, solar well, shift. Really. Well, we've got solar the polar, yeah, CMEs. Yeah, the polar, solar. We just had another CME. The other oh, day. did we? Yeah, they're not yeah. reporting them now anymore, though. That's what I'm saying. It's a lot more with the sun than people want to think. Also, exactly okay. with the with the uh, magnetic uh, the magnetosphere, right? I think that's what you call it, the magnetosphere. Right. Yeah, the North Pole shifted. Your, when you use your compass, it looks weird area. now. Mm. It looks weird wow. when you use a compass now. Like Spain, oh, yeah. freezing right now, but Siberia is super warm. So, uh, Siberia is so warm, they've had permafrost unfreeze that has never unfreezed in the history of yeah. our modern times. Yeah, this has nothing to do with uh, any any man or anything. This is Earth. This is this is part of living on Earth, and Earth is typically yeah. a very warm place. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, yeah. <laughs> Dinosaurs. Well, that's so, that's that, that's what I. Yeah, yeah. That's so, actually that's kind of funny that you mentioned that because when you look at how the weather or, or the climate mm -hmm. is historically, and we're not, and I'm not just talking within like 30 years. I'm talking like thousands of years. It's we're actually in a cooler area than it, we would be on an average uh, cycle. No, exactly. This is something deep time. This is something that people have to realize that humanity's concept of the climate is relatively naive. Mm. That the hundreds, like it once rained for like two million years straight, I want to say. I watched the PBS, uh, PBS eons and there is a, like the, the earth was purple at one point. Oxygen was mm -hmm. not like exactly. this is how the earth grows. This is, you know, this is like you're a creature on earth, you have absolutely no control of the climate, and that's been the case for like, everything that's ever lived. And the biggest clue you actually have is look at all the exhibits all over the world the types of clothes that the people wore way back in time, as far back as you can find them. Look at the types of clothes that they wore. That's the part that a lot of people aren't putting two and two together. Yep, is that they were mostly uh, nude, even in the north. Like Norse Norsemen would walk around shirtless, and mostly, exactly, berserkers would mm -hmm. be naked. You couldn't be naked in modern day Finland in the winter. I mean, think about it realistically. That's not that no man, no man, no matter if you were born into it. Not yeah, it's not gonna happen. The so idea are, that we so did live in a blackouts. Place. All the blackouts yeah. are probably more cabal related than weather related, though. So yeah, 
Um, it, well, Romans Romans grew grapes in England, which wasn't uh, achievable until you know only modern times. Like mm-hmm. they were, like you know, exactly it, living in a much more temperate and mild climate. Also, the the geography was starkly different with the recent floodings. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware of like the shifting of the of the Earth's oceans and stuff. Africa will soon be underwater. Like for example, it'll be divided by an ocean. Are you and talking so, about Edgar Casey's predicted maps? No, like the, yeah, yeah. These these are both Edgar Casey's predicted, you know, uh, coastal flooding maps, but also just realistic projections of how the you know the Earth kind of goes between. Like most of North America was underwater at one point. Yes, it was. Yeah, it, exactly. Like that was a thing for hundreds of millions of years. Was was North America was mostly underwater. The Salton yep. Sea existed. Uh, during the Spanish mapping of America, and it dried up within that 400 years. A uh, fascinating Egypt fact to think cool. about. In my biology class, they said that a shift of five degrees will change the uh, entire land climate 100 miles north. So if you go five degrees higher, you're suddenly you're having the same climate as if you were 100 miles south of where you used to be. Yeah, Earth, well, we all uh, shifted upward, so we all shifted north. So whatever... Um, you know, St. Louis is not in the same spot that it used to be globally. It's kind of almost like uh, how a skin would kind of just rotate, you know. Yeah, we're it's starting to look like kind of idea. Yeah. Alaska with the sun barely on the horizon right now. It's weird. And then you got to <laughs> think of volcanoes. Volcanism is a major factor in the actual atmospheric climate of a planet. Not so much mm-hmm. asteroids or debris like that or gases, but straight up Carbon. Vulcan- yeah, if they, one major volcano can cause a mini ice age. If a right. number of super cardiovers would go off in, in succession. It <laughs> so would definitely, cause, definitely yeah, some yeah, conversations like, for another for time. Let's go ahead and get back on topic. Um, so the blackouts, as far as that go, we can definitely say probably some of it's um, caused by weather. Some of it's caused by the sun. So focusing more on as far as what, you know, we're, we've been talking about with you know, like the cabal and the leaks and everything that we've been doing. Um, now, you guys, we were talking a little bit early about, you said that there was some intel on resignations. Um, well, let's see. You had the uh, you have Angela Merkel, Chancellor of Germany, uh, talking about how she is actually stepping down this, this year. Um, and she has not, she's been probably the longest reigning uh, political leader in Europe um, oh, wow. besides, besides the queen. Wow. Uh, so if she's, she's stepping down, we have not seen the Estonian president in quite some time. Uh, so there's been a lot of, a lot of shifting going on big time. There's a lot, uh, like I said, the, the Italian government is in a, a uh, very tenuous place. I think I believe they're in the pro- process of collapsing right now due to all the uh, um, scandals that came. Out. And South Korea one of the is chaos thought- too. I'm sorry. South Korea is in chaos too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, their thought- leadership. <laughs> Yeah, they, I was uh, gonna say their leadership was indicted on being. Well, they're in a dealing cult. with a lot of. Well, they're also dealing with a lot of power vacuum all over the world as well. So South Korea is suffering from the same issues. Oh, the South Korean prime minister was in a cult. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah, massive scandal in South Korea right now. She was a member mm-hmm. of the Twelve Butterflies, which is a genocidal cult bent on the eradication of men. Wow. That's an actual thing. Mm-hmm. That's horrible. Exactly. Like the whole world is in is an absolute um, coup almost <laughs> against these corrupt leaders. It's time though. As, it's so time. That's represented by the South Korean like situation. Yeah, I could easily see that happening in Italy. I could easily see that happening in Estonia or other places as well. Like, uh, you no, know, that's good, but that's hot. Well, and you guys had Sorry. mentioned earlier about like Alibaba or like the paper dragon. There's a couple of key things. Did you guys want to kind of talk about that a little bit? Oh. Yeah, uh, what, what, what's his name again? I forgot his name again. Jack Maul. Yeah, yeah, he hasn't been seen in about a month. Oh, he's uh, dead. Yeah, I, that's what I, that's what I've been. That's what I thought. He's probably dead. 
the Chinese, either the Chinese <laughs> or the deep state obviously killed him for um, trying to rain on their parade, their, their, uh, you know, financial. He, got, yeah. he basically got too big for his britches. <laughs> Can't challenge uh, Jeff Bezos, you know. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. It, it, I actually wouldn't put it past a actual, you know, like, it, do you not think that Jeff Bezos would have a hitman on his payroll at some point? Wouldn't surprise me. Um, no, well, exactly. I, I'm him. pretty sure that, that other already established monopolies took out the upstart, you know, little little Jack Ma and his ant corporation. What but happens he when you push was, too many buttons? He was also filmed criticizing the Communist Party, especially uh, criticizing specifically Xi Jinping. Who, um, uh, yeah. you know, um, Winnie Pooh don't take no shit. <laughs> <laughs> Winnie Pooh don't take no shit. Uh, I just, I just realized what you meant. <laughs> yeah, Xi, and, Xi is a very, very dangerous individual. Exactly, he's a very cool. dangerous individual. He is like, like a leader of China. Yeah, welcome to China. Oh, <laughs> welcome to China. Him bitch. and the. Uh, him and the premier of China too. Oh yeah, his little uh, his little second in command. So powerful, he banned the letter N from the entire alphabet. What? Why? Yeah, it's part of his censorship. There was too many Google searches brought up with inconvenient stuff under the letter M, and he completely banned it from the oh. entire Chinese vocabulary. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> Look it up. The letter M is in Mary. N, as in nugget. Nancy, wow. Nancy, yeah. Oh I have God. seen video, and I well, now that I think about it, I don't want to trigger anyone, about what they're doing in the Ugar camps and wow. the organ trade. And they're doing, what, they're, what they're doing over there is very similar to what they were doing with the Falun Gong. And, and, well, they've already perfected technology, let's just say, and the, the, the methods for keeping a human torso alive biologically alive without a head God. to That's specifically sick. yeah and and yeah and i doubt these were these were uh <laughs> i doubt these were you know volunteers no I'm sure. usually they're not That's right. Yeah. There's so many they, programs going on. I saw a video of that. Yeah. From, they could have been. And it's, it was real. Ruined. It was real video. Jeez. I, I, I do a lot of uh, deep web, dark web um, searching. And one of the things as a citizen journalist I do is like war correspondence, uh, deep, like, under, like, you know, live leak esque like gore and stuff like that but from real real situations and you know sometimes you got to see that to actually realize you know this is real and that's why i was saying that you know is a very dangerous time. individual no oh, i mean he's a super villain that's what he is people yeah. don't think about china like that but basically this in incarnation of evil i mean what did you say like, if it, the full truth came out 99 percent of people would be hospitalized. I mean, that includes us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Even as advanced as the information that we know, it's a very sobering thought. It is. The, uh, the, the gentleman I, I was talking about, about before when he came to the premiere would be uh, Li uh, Kiang. Um, his family has connections to uh, uh, biochemical companies all over the all over uh, China. I wouldn't be surprised if their family's connected to what they're doing when it came to the Uyghurs and other uh, dissidents. If you look at the, the news coming out of China, you start seeing a lot about genetic research, genetic uh, engineering, things like that. Biomedical cloning. science is their forte and the thing that they excel at. Now, I remember out of a country this large in the modern world, you kind of have to be the best at something, right? And theirs is absolutely unethical human research yeah. and i've often yeah, and, thought about this that if you were a mad scientist you could have a research like laboratory on an oil rig or something you can just go to china if you have a valid you know mangala type 
fascination with, you know, unit, unit 751 style fucked up shit, then yeah, they'll give you absolutely carte blanche to do it. They, you know, as long as you uh, vow absolute loyalty to the communist party, you know, you can, you can do literally vivisections of any kind of caliber of anything you want to do. And there is absolute nothing but encouragement and, you know, the higher level of, uh, and exactly. I think that's like a huge thing. It's like a nightmare well, hall. For example, in yeah. 2018, he was elected lifelong leader of China. Did you guys know that? I did not yep. know that. Yeah, yes, he, he, was. he can never be asked to step down or outvoted. He is forever oh. the leader of China. It exists as long as yep. he lives. Until, no, yeah, until he, death. He is absolutely supreme what? ruler. And he experimentation is. <laughs> going on. Especially like where and then that was, uh, or come I, I'm from. Speaking of that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Speaking yeah. of that, uh, that uh, Reeser. <laughs> no, you're, you're fine. Uh, speaking of that uh, Chinese uh, research, I, I remember reading about how they're in the process of uh, creating super soldiers for their uh, military. They already by have trying them. to heighten different abilities. Mm -hmm. They already have them. Uh, if you look at Instagram, uh, they they'll they'll be in, uh, they'll be models and things like that, like fitness models. They're mm -hmm. First of all, the Chinese are an extremely athletic people. Absolutely, do not do not underestimate the Chinese at all. Bruce Lee was Chinese, for example, and they just they they just got those ancient secrets of not only how to train and, and calibrate the human body, but obviously with genetics, making the athletes breed, making those uh, you know specific uh, genes which are normally recessive in the Chinese physiology dominant, um, you know. They are not a small people. They are, they are oftentimes misunderstood. The Chinese are an extremely athletic, powerful people. It's regional and it's tribal, but they are eight, seven. They can easily be over six foot, close to seven foot tall. They can easily, you know, be capable of outstanding physical stamina and, and you know, agility and stuff like acrobats to power lifters. Um, and they're incredibly intelligent. So yeah, they're it's like a it's like a you know, ground zero for the new world. And the, the new world is going to be Gattaca. I don't know if you guys ever watched Gattaca. Yep. Uh -uh. Where like, you know, if you were an astronaut, it was because you were tailor-made to be one. So we're, ta so we're talking about a caste system. It's like the SSP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. No, it's, it's absolutely, you know, uh, the Chinese have their own SSP, you know, the Red Dragon. And a lot of that is their, their what they use these super soldiers for. It's time to take all that crap out and stop it. I want to go back to resignations for a minute. I'm curious if uh, we say, for example, this hypothesis that the Italian president is taken down. Um, I think Alex, you had mentioned Estonia as well. Uh, I've heard chatterings of not just the Italian president, but the in, uh, entire structure of Italy. Yep. Um, yep. So let's carry this thought out. What do you think that would mean if that ends up being the case? Does this mean Nassara? Um, what what I was does this thinking, play out I would, logistically? I would think, I'm thinking just Sarah. Yeah, because didn't the and, Nassara already start in July and finish around September? That's October? true. It would be Nassara. Well, okay, so, so Nassara supposedly, and this is from the most recent uh, uh, news that came out of it, Nassara was officially signed and approved to roll out on the 2nd of November. I know there have been several times where they're like, oh, it was signed, it was signed. It was signed on the, tw on the 2nd of November. And that is the reason why all of this stuff was allowed to occur, because what it's going to do is create that bubble that's going to burst and it's going to crash everything. And that's why you're seeing all of these things happening, which will allow the rollout of the GCR appropriately with a good reason. It's kind of like using the Great Reset against itself. What I heard, there's a four month uh, time frame once Nasara slash Jasara sign that it has to be rolled out by. So if the second is the day, hard. then that would take it to what? February 2, mm -hmm. huh? It would take it to March. March. 
the Ides of March, mm-hmm. literally the Ides of March. Oh, wow. Fascinating mm-hmm. how they just kind of lined that up, eh? Yeah. And that would be that would be perfect because there have been a lot of people that have been saying that um, this election that is happening right now, this inauguration is mm-hmm. just for show. Mm-hmm. And since we are allegedly in a uh, insurrection act situation, all of this stuff can doesn't happen. The, the first, certain parts of the constitution can be lifted for national security reasons. Like and so, here's what I heard. I heard it was signed on November second, but it didn't go into effect until the third. So if we play mm-hmm. that forward, and we have the Ides of March, etc. I've also heard in prior presidential inaugurations, they didn't occur on January 20th until later, and that the earlier presidents yep. were ushered in mm-hmm. on March 4. So that would fit the timeline yep. perfectly. March 4th, and they were not actually, they were not these big ceremonies initially. Mm-hmm. Uh, and originally, they were actually in the White House. Yeah. And then they would have a big pock and circumstance afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, I've also heard that we're also looking at the collapse of the United of the Corporation of the United States of America, mm-hmm. which would end the uh, the act the Act of eighteen seventy one, which made Washington D.C. a corporation, nullifying right. the the original United States Corporation. And so, if the if uh, Trump were to be re inaugurated, he would not be inaugurated as the forty fifth president. 19th. But the 19th, mm-hmm. due to the fact that yeah. Ulysses S. Grant was the last official president. Yeah. And what that would do is that would actually hold all people accountable. That's why when you're seeing this whole thing about rules for thee, it's not, not for me. It's because mm-hmm. that's how the system is created. Um, that will not be the case. That's why, that's why you're going to see a purging of the uh, judiciary, of the legislative, all over the world. It, that's what this is all showing is how incompetent all of these people are right. and the only way to get rid of them is to do a massive clean sweep mm-hmm. now they've we been working haven't they been working on that new basically the clean sweep the i'm trying to even think the the language to bring in but anyway those people that, that would be coming in to replace the ones outgoing haven't they been doing that yes. since about two, 2017 or 2018 Really yeah, actually, no. It, this, is, this is actually older than that. A lot oh, of this stuff it? has been. Uh, a lot of this. A lot of the the, uh, the plans exactly go back. I would have to say almost 60, 70 years. Really? Wow. Uh, well, initially the plan started uh, back in the early forties. The SARA itself started in the early forties, and that had to do with price fixing within in the industrial. Uh, factory f- uh, farming and stuff like that when I started going around and that's when the SAR really kicked in um, uh, what was planned to do but it would actually co- go into effect or at least wasn't signed until uh, uh, Bill Clinton was in, was president and that was actually in response to what happened with JFK um, because um, Bill Clinton was uh, had had the Oval Office doors kicked into him with U.S. Marshals and other uh, special agents saying, sign this or we will expose everything you've done. Now, to play devil's advocate, one of the talking points that I heard with what you just said is that if that did come to fruition, then the rebuttal could be that you can't sign something into law if it's forced to have a signature under duress. Mm. So, so what do you think that uh, in that case would happen, Alex? I don't know, but I, I do want to kind of piggyback on what we were just mentioning with what Alex said about the end of the USA Inc. Mm-hmm. Uh, and going back mm-hmm. to like pre-grant um, that that fits into alignment perfectly with Trump's recent statement about a peaceful transition to the next administration. Um, yep. Essentially, he's uh, double speaking, like talking about himself, but that it's uh, the new administration is still a Trump administration, but it would be under uh, um, the, the original United States. The yeah, exactly. So. The best. The best part about that new restore, uh, that change, uh, transition of power is that it would put the original, uh, we've got this number confused, 12th or 13th, 
uh, the original the original titles of nobility uh, amendment back into the United States Constitution, and that would be uh, devastating to the cabal. It, it would be it, so that would basically take our straw man, destroy it, and put us all as U.S. nationals instead of U.S. citizens. Is that correct? Yeah. So basically, it would be re well, restoring would us. Well, it wouldn't also. It would also make it so that anybody with any type of title. So like an esquire, a lord, a lady, a mark, a count, anything that has any type of title besides sir, uh, besides uh, Mr., Miss, Ms., or Mrs., with any, besides those, and I think doctor would be another one, um, they would not be allowed to have any type of public office. They're not allowed to be within the government whatsoever. And that would also get rid of anybody who is considered dual citizenship. So anybody who has dual allegiance to different two countries. Like for instance, a lot of uh, people have uh, dual citizenship with like Israel, for example. Uh, they wouldn't be allowed to serve. It, it would only be people who are only American nationals or citizens uh, fully, that's it. Wow. And what I heard as another component of that is in the original constitution, there was an amendment um, that was made explicit that anyone that was a lawyer would not be allowed to be served in Congress. Have you heard that before? I haven't heard of that. That's where the Esquire comes into play. Ah, uh, Esquire, that's okay. Where, that's where the title, so when you are a Esquire, you are serving the bar and the bar is oh, devoted to the crown. <laughs> right. That that, and, that, that, and that would also mean that we would have an overhaul of the post office system since the British crown has a lot of controlling when it comes to postage and that has to do with postal wars and shipping. So oh, wow. and really, that, to kind of interject well, really quick, because the postal thing, what about the dude that's saying, okay, I took over the post office and because I know that there's different stories going on. There's that guy and then there's supposedly the new crown in England. Does How do you think all that ties together and what do you think is actually legit with that? I don't, just, I'm not recalling so, names. Oh. But. <clears throat> You're probably referring to Russell J. Gould. I think so. Uh, he's and the new he, uh, he is, Right, wasn't he the guy that kind of took over uh, the Postmaster uh, General spot? Not just that, he has basically controlled everything. Any particular title, he has some type of control or influence on it. And he has, has solidified it with all international institutions, redefining grammar to be synth uh, syntactically correct. Right. Uh, basically turning the cabal system upside down and inside out so that they, you couldn't recognize it anymore. So do you think that that coincides with Jazara? I've that heard one, that. I'm not too, I'm probably, I'm not too sure. I'm... Yeah, I've heard it does. I have heard that's, that's the linchpin that was needed. Um, although I am really confused by that of how wording and then they, I was listening to some podcasts and it, it even mentioned something about like quantum wording or something along those right. lines. Quantum, I don't know quantum what that grammar. Means. Quantum yeah, do you know what that quantum means grammar. Like the practical implications of that? That goes in within uh, hand well, in it, hand with Black's law, doesn't it? Correcting well, quantum that. grammar has to do with the concept that we were speaking incorrectly. Right. So it's like if I were to talk to you and I said, how are you doing? And you're like, I'm good. Well, you're not, you, what does good mean? You're supposed to be saying, I am well. That is the grammatically correct way of doing things, saying things. So for example, let's talk about the three letter agencies because this is my favorite one to talk about. <laughs> Each three letter agency is grammatically incorrect. You cannot, you, there is no reason to have say the Bureau of the, the Federal Bureau of Investigations that is grammatically and syntactically incorrect. It would be the, investig the Bureau for Investigations. Hmm. Uh, or or there's also the Department of Weights, uh, Weights and Measures, you know, the ones where they deal with all the scales. Right. The proper way of pronouncing it would be the, uh, the Department of the Weights and of the Measures. So there's just small little gr grammatical things in there and spelling that you have to do properly in order for it to be recognized uh, as a thing. So like, let's do this in a more like common way a lot of people will see. Uh, remember when they were releasing all this information about uh, Comey mm -hmm. and we couldn't find his name? Oh yeah, Corny. 
So they they, they changed they change it to corny. Interesting. So you had to change how it's spelled, but it's, <clears throat> if you looked at how they typed the letters, it spelled out Comey, but it was written corny due to the font. So let's go back to like the weights and measures, and instead, it, like you said, technically it would be weights uh, of the measures, right? So, like, what what's the practical fallout of that? Does that mean that it's it's under some sort of different legal jurisdiction because it's not syntactically correct, or what exactly is it? It is it is, it is fraudulent. fraudulent. Okay. Like if it, you had a straw man is, name, no. um, there's a whole sovereign citizen issue. Like it's like it's in that vein where, say, like uh, Donald Trump's name was spelt somehow differently, and thus in the federal records, you know, he wasn't who he is. But you know, it's yeah, it's it's about fraud. It's okay. it comes down to fraud, and it's the American corporation. So it, it's it, a lot of like that kind of business. Got business it. also with the capital letters and how right yeah, right got it. And at the end of the at the end of the day we're dealing mm. with spellings spell yeah. craft right. word craft you know everything has a meaning and a place and a thing yeah. that's why when you see like your license plate uh, like a like a uh, driver's license the entire name is capitalized that is not you that is you as chattel yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or your social it's, security it's, number. It's just your your name is oh, full caps because. Yeah. Well, supposedly the social the social security system should have been dismantled and so right. the birth certificates in ninety nine. Yep. Mm -hmm. We should have paid all that. We, that we that, that the only reason why we did that was because they bailed out the United States after uh, World War Two. I mean World War One. To be honest, uh, even though people like to think that you need an absolute like. Uh, legitimate social security number to function in society, you really, there's a lot of work around and stuff. And it's surprising how much flexibility the country has. Like say uh, you were born Amish, you know, or, or an Orthodox, like legitimate religion, like a uh, Hebrew, it, exactly. Like things like people think are set in stone, like you need to be in the system, not necessarily uh, the case, you know, like, like actual legal framework wise, people are born mm -hmm. without birth certificates. We don't have to pay taxes if we didn't fill out W twos, right? Exactly. Yeah, it, it's all to, it's all to funnel you as human chattel. Like like Alex said, it's all to funnel you to be uh, a good little goyim. Yeah, especially our language. The original doc you know. The original mm -hmm. document that most people would get if they actually wanted documentation would be something called a certificate of live birth. Which showed you where. Uh, so, if you wanted to say, "Hey, where were you born?" Well, I was born on this date at this time, and that would prove that you're a live individual. When you have a birth certificate, it is actually you are dead. You are not able to represent yourself. You are not able to do basically anything, and it basically invalidates you from any type of constitutional right. Which makes sense because when your mama files that paperwork, that date is your death date, mm -hmm. and then that's when they take well, you and create you into the straw man as a corporation from there so have uh, ever heard of the holy sea part of the you know the the whole uh, admiralty law which one like, is that one uh, the, the admiralty the maritime law oh you know, right the right like, the, the law yeah. the law of the water the delivery room is actually like a port uh, legally considered like a port of ingress or or uh, receipt so, so that when you're so, you're born it's like you're coming on to the country and then officially indoctrinated as part of like the uh, the cargo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why they take so, your footprints directly off of, and it's in blue ink, not red ink. Mm -hmm. And they wow. do your footprints because your feet have not touched the ground yet. It's the same kind. It's the same uh, genre of conspiracy as the same. Like, why is there a gold fringe on all the court flags, all the flags mm -hmm. in courtroom? Because admiralty law, these things, little details do matter, and it is, uh, and the overall consideration that the United States is the Dutch East India Company. <clears throat> Sorry, the, the mm -hmm. Dutch East India Company evolved into what we became the United States, and uh, mm -hmm. it's still governed as a shipping company. It's still governed with the same admiralty laws and maritime laws of privateers. Uh, the original no. name of the country was like these United States. All right. Something mm -hmm. along those lines. The, it was exactly. the original name United was States these for, United States for America. Yeah, for right, mm. exactly. It's a little more. 
it's a little more the the idea of manifest destiny and its origin as it is just these are the colonies operated by yeah. uh, the provisional governors of of these you know United States exactly like you know the the Articles of Confederation before the United States Constitution like and the well, and that changed a lot of this had... that also eighteen seventy one or was that earlier. Oh, that was even earlier than that. I mean, okay. technically, we never actually delivered. We ever so after the Revolutionary War, quote unquote, uh, we actually were in a massive bankruptcy because we were we we were just fledgling thing, and uh, we had this, all this debt, and so we had so we had the European powers at the time, which were France, Spain, and and Britain, saying, "Who is now going to be the debt collector?" France said, hey, we should do it because, hey, they are debt in, they're in debt with francs. Spain said, no, we should do it because uh, we discovered the land first. And then Britain said, hey, we just fought a war with them. It's our, it's our, we claimed it in the first place. And that's why they, that's why they collect, that's why they controlled the Philadelphia post office mm -hmm. and other shipping lanes due to the fact of them being debt collectors. And that's why uh, when we dealt with the Treaty of Paris, uh, they already said that they we were going to relinquish control to the British Crown for in perpetuity. Well, there's also just very strange little details in the first, uh, you know, key moments of the country's relationships with other nations as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like the desk in the White House is made from wood, or first it's a gift from England, and it's made from wood from a ship that was found called the Resolute, and which was returned. And a sign of goodwill, a naval gesture. Um, the United States Navy is the earliest and or the first uh, military branch, you know, that was created in the, you know, mm -hmm. defense of our country. So was that before JFK? Then that desk? Oh yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Far, far. Oh. This far, was this was during the whaling days. This was the during the days of like the eighteen twelve war and shit. Like, Interesting. Yeah, that's how they that's, always reference it as the JFK desk. Oh really? Well, that was. Because they talk of, about uh, it in so National Treasure too. It's actually a kind of a, a key part of National Treasure, like mm -hmm. the, the lore of that movie. And it's very, it's it's part of that Illuminati weirdness That's where you're like, what thing. kind of country do we live in exactly when it's actually like mostly a merchant marine nation? So you do know? you think we'll go back to being nationals instead of citizens or how is that going to unfold, do you think? Um. Uh that's what I was the wondering with the Chisara. This, well, right. the philosophy of this has to come into being like, is a aboriginal citizen in, like, for example, the United Nations framework considered, you know, chattel? Are we going to still be considered chattel? Like, do we just decide our own status? Like, you know, we're sovereign citizens. Yeah. At the same time, the, the state system that we exist in is not a state system. It's a company. Mm -hmm. It's like calling yourself employees and like, what should yeah. we call ourselves? Right. Well, Going back we do to have natural human... law or common law. Yeah, we do have human rights. We do have a system of cosmopolitan framework of ethics and philosophy and statecraft that we can follow. Like we're not, we're not going to start banging sticks together and go into anarchy, which I think <laughs> people are thinking about. We'll become the potential of the philosopher nation of, of hardy, independent, and in, you know, with, with integrity um, in for ourselves. So exciting. Yeah. So essentially, we won't have a title. We'll just be, what, sovereign beings, I suppose. Yeah. 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 And, we're and supposed I think to be that... our own, we're supposed to be our own bosses, mm -hmm. to put it, when it even well, it comes God's to... Anyway. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, our, we decide how things are supposed to go. That includes with our daily lives and it includes even financially. Uh, you know, the bank system has been in the rule that we have to go with whatever they say, but we are going to be our own bank soon. We're going to be in charge of absolutely everything. And even back in the old days, um, we were able to keep 100% of the paycheck. Right. There wasn't all these crazy oh, things right. attached to it. Yeah, we've, well, I think, slowly over the course since uh, the Civil War, only understood the union, only understood the ideas of DC's federal control over our lives, which is the same thing as being dominated by a foreign power. It's the same thing say that oh. if we were underneath like the shogunate of Japan, you know, and us understanding our existence only by the servitude of that one empire, 
it's an empire like any other you know and yeah, i think that's I mean, the same thing what did the british think of the romans and then what did they think about the fall of rome you know they were like what are we going to do now who are we going to who are we going to work for and it's like you know you you existed before this wow we well, yep. even the whole thing with the taxes you know when they say we're taxed to death but we weren't really oh. born free anyway so that part of the saying is not even correct wow. well i mean even taxation is completely unconstitutional Mm-hmm. The only time, and the only way taxation is supposed to be done is through levy through Congress, and every time they try doing it properly, it doesn't go through. That's why they have to jam it into other bills and other things like that, um, so that it's not not given the proper representation. Taxation without representation, one way or another. Yep, we've had that. Jamming things over into bill is actually their specialty. Look what they were trying to do with the stimulus. Now, granted, um, the idea of the fiat currency in our taxes actually, you know, being both ours to begin with and meaning any uh, having any kind of intrinsic value after they ditched the gold standard, the silver standard, yeah. um, that's kind of like the big jokes on us type thing is yeah. while we're still debating and arguing over the legalities of taxes, our money is basically valueless. It's yeah. just, you know, it's increasingly becoming an abstract concept of and even now becoming officially cryptocurrency, which That's I mean, I don't know. Suggested to invest in precious metals. There, yep. Yes. <laughs> and you've got some cool well, ones my, that you've my, collected lately. Yeah. It's really neat. I, I've always been very critical when it comes to uh, cryptocurrencies. And no, it, it's in the name. It's government yeah. speak, 1984 style, cryptocurrency, hidden money, uh, you know, mysterious yeah. money. Yeah, and it it's like, I was going to say, I was going to exactly. go by a different. I was going to go by a totally different definition. I totally forgot about those. I was going to go by the fact that you can use "crypt" as the word for dead. It's dead money. It doesn't ah, exist. Dead money. I like that. That's cool. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned if computer average. systems go down, so does yep. your entire financial system. Exactly. exactly. It's a, if you can't physically hold something, you do not own it. Mm-hmm. Yes, I've I've never invested in it because of that one principle that I simply do not trust it. Yeah. Are you I, guys I, aware? Not backed by anything. How can you trust it? You can't. And exactly. they can they can suggest the value is is on a never ending roller coaster up, but I'll always think it's a scam in my heart of hearts because I watched the whole thing come out like I was cognizantly aware of it since 2012, and to see it blow up as it did, yeah, like one part of me kind of regrets not investing in it so I could kind of cash in on it, but at the same time. <laughs> I, I've always felt like it was a scam and uh, like yeah. in the moment I would have told you the same thing like do not do not trust these people the like Kathy uh, Kaiser Max Kaiser from the Kaiser report all these Bitcoin yeah. gurus that came up overnight this was this was promoted and sponsored by somebody maybe George Soros to destabilize the petrodollar and to kind of sow a, a, a civil an economic civil war in America. Or at least the Western world. Now, well, what I, I wonder, heard, some of the white papers that came out about the original crypto did have a suggestion to have it backed by metals and tied to it. I don't know if any of you have heard of that. I've also heard chatter that there could be, um, in, in on like the, the Ripple platform, some sort of backing behind metal in the future. Have any of you heard of that? Well, there's also... When it, so one of the big ones has to be Bitcoin, and Bitcoin actually has two, uh, two different types of Bitcoin. And I'm not talking about like Bitcoin Cash or anything like that. There's two very different forms of Bitcoin. The first one is BTC, and that's the one that's most commonly used. It's the one that's connected to uh, crime through uh, backdoor. You know, you could transfer Bitcoin to somebody else without actually having any tracking and tracing. Uh, but the other one is called BSV. And that one is the uh, traditional Bitcoin that was taken. Uh, that was from the original creator. Uh, that's the one. Uh, that one is under the pseudonym S- uh, Satoshi. Um, and he actually was trying to do stuff to break away from central banking altogether and create right. a sovereign currency. Exactly. Now um, that story, it's it's in itself very mysterious. The the anonymous identity of. Um, well, Shotosi, how do you how do you actually pronounce his name? 
He was his Satoshi, but here's the thing: we, we've never actually known what the actual who actually it is. No, it's it's uh, just absolute uh, mystery, and it's it probably even wasn't a real person. It was a it was a nom de guerre, you know, like a uh, a pseudonym. Yeah, but it's a, it, it, that is exactly what it is. It's a pseudonym. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of times we uh, think it's people. It's code words. Code words. It, oh, it has it probably has something to do with the yakuza, to be honest. If if you want uh, to look at something that basic, like oh, it's supposed to be Asian, so like they're being honest that way. No, it probably has nothing to do with Japan. It probably has nothing to do with anyone who's even Asian. It was something that no. some exactly someone just used to to muddy the waters and provide a smoke screen. Mm -hmm. um, so, so uh, the most likely creator is the person who originally created Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin is actually not owned or was not is not run by the person who originally founded it. It's kind of created its own life and it was taken over by big banks, and that's the reason why. I think. Uh, or isn't it weird that everyone forgot the original Bitcoin heists that happened around 2014, 2015? Mm -hmm. That that there was hundreds of millions of dollars taken from virtual wallets. Wow. And including even the uh, first Bitcoin trading uh, forum was hacked and, and you know, lost, I think it was something around $73 million worth of these mm -hmm. Bitcoins. So nowadays, though, that would be valued in the billions. And so, I mean, like that's the thing, like this was a currency, this is rife for organized crime and criminal activity. Money mm -hmm. laundering. Yep. Well, and I heard even within like the past year or two that um, crypto was used in um, the the uh, the dark web for child trafficking and uh, gun and drug trafficking and whatnot. And I uh, just made in Bitcoin. Yeah. And there was a, a huge um, somewhere in Europe, a huge uh, capturing of this. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's one of the reasons traced. why. So it that's can my be point. It can be traced. Yeah, but that's, yeah. It, yeah, it can be traced. And they, that's how they were finding out who all the bad guys were and what they were doing, what yep. they were up to and where they've been. And to speak about bad guys, the number one investor in Bitcoin and miner of Bitcoin is the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the cryptos are uh, farmed in China. Exactly. Like, mm -hmm. that's what I was saying that. It's something that the value of its own self, which is celebrated by Westerners as economic freedom, is actually created by the most totalitarian countries' demand of an untraceable, uh, internationally, you know, uh, lucrative. You know, that's something. It's like it's it's absolute everything, madness. Everything that they have but designed, yeah. bought up, it's the opposite of what they say it is. It's yeah. I mean, look at the, everything that they have labeled. It's always the opposite, though. So think mirror. Wonderland. Yeah, exactly. Quick question, yeah. though. Quick question about the precious metals. Um, this is probably not the forum to discuss it, but beyond gold and silver, would you suggest actual, uh, you know, precious industrial metals as viable investments? Because I've been looking at those, like rhodesium. Yeah, like, I mean, 2020, um, I don't know. I mean, uh, titanium. Palladium. Yeah, I mean, if, if uh, so, palladium is kind of a, one that's really shot up. Um, there were others, you know, uh, like a few years ago that are, were used in um, catalytic converters. And before that really got implemented, yeah, that's the time to invest because it, you know, skyrocketed so much. Uh, obviously, buy is cheap, buy low, sell high. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, so, I mean, what is the uh, whole thing about the remember the white gold that was being popular for a while? Mm. Oh, platinum. Yeah. yeah. Platinum. Right. Then I said, I would, I would like to have a more diverse portfolio of, of actual um, metals used in, in um, industrial purposes, higher advanced technology purposes. I mean, what, what did they do would, to copper? What did they do to copper that's now? What I was you know? going to say, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if I, obviously I'm not a financial advisor, I can't give any formal advice, but what I would say from all of my learnings is uh, silver by far is the best one to go into now. Uh, gold would be second if you can afford it. And then um, buy a little bit of copper. I've got a little bit of copper. Um, we're not on that timeline of having doomsday scenario and all the preppers come to pass. However, if that were 
to take place, then I'd be saying definitely invest in copper because what is copper used for in regards to protection? Yeah. Bullets, yeah. right? So um, that would have been, you know, oh. an area to, to invest in. Now, uh, copper hash uh, increased from what it was, um, but from, I don't care what platform you're looking at, whether you're looking at it from, um, you know, uh, like uh, people who have awakened like us, or you're looking at traditional uh, advisors and whatnot from a financial point of view, everyone is saying silver is the place to be. So if I had, if I had a thousand dollars to invest um, and someone were to ask me what to do with it and, um, and they gave me the money and said, here, how would you invest it? From everything that I'm learning, I'd put almost everything in silver. Silver. Okay. Yep. So and, that's something that's, and that's the best way to do that market. within silver is going to be the uh, silver rounds uh, because they're the cheapest. Um, or, you know, just you can look online. I've made some videos kind of talking about how to invest in silver. Um, but you know, the, um, the, the rounds are one of the best ways to go and just get generic. You don't need to get specialty that you, you start to get, you start to, to spend more money than you need to, when you're just trying to accrue the metal itself, just go generic rounds or bars would be the other one, but there's oodles of websites out there. Jam bullions, a common one. Um, you know, again, I did, I made three really long videos talking about the ins and outs of how to do it. So the information's out there, but, um, it's, it's just, you can go to my YouTube channel, Alexicus Blumicus, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can see it there, but, um, yeah, I mean, now's the time because we still have a small window, uh, especially before this, uh, election stuff is over with. And then. I mean, once Nasara gets kicked in, again, from, from all of my studies and what I'm learning is um, silver is just going to explode. And uh, there's really two ways to invest in silver. One is from like a, a short term, you know, wanting to flip. Um, and then the other is for that, that's kind of investment is what they call it. And then the other is like stacking, which is more like long term. So over the next 10 year period, if you're patient enough, that's really where you're going to see the most amount of growth. So... Awesome. And you can also, you know, I mean, there's, there's other ways. And again, I talked about this in the videos, there's other ways to invest, like you can do so um, through, you know, kind of like you would with stocks. Um, but that's not suggested, uh, just because there, there isn't enough uh, metal to back the, the paper bonds that you'd be buying, if you went that route. And um, once it explodes, people are going to want to cash in. And then there's 10 times the amount of contracts as there are uh, metal to support it. So uh, like what Alex was saying earlier, if you don't hold it in your hand, then it's not yours. So on that note, I'm really curious about what's going to happen to credit scores and credit with just our, oh my that's gosh, that's really all fake. <laughs> the whole credit yeah, score system is just, down. it's just an hopscotch game. That's all it right. was. It's just fake points. Uh, right. You know, uh, all of that stuff, it's, you know, you're not going to need credit scores if you're going to buy a house in the future, a car. That's just a made up game that they play to drive you crazy. At the end of the day, you should be able to walk in and be able to buy a house or a car or whatever, just as you do with a pair of shoes. Nobody yeah. ever had to look at your credit scores to buy a pair of right. shoes. Now, unfortunately, the worst case scenario, they're implementing social credit. For example, in China, I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that. Not financial. The idea of credit is reputation, and the, yeah. the idea of credit existed in uh, the early 1900s because it's tied to urbanization. It's tied to behavior. It's tied to reputation. You know, if you're an upstanding quote unquote citizen, you're given more flexibility with your purchasing power with your with your you know financial state and they can strip that and take that from you yeah. or impose debt on you upon it right. so really it was only meant to hurt people it was only meant to hurt people it was only meant to cause poverty capitalism is a Control. uh 
artificial poverty, you know, uh, it needs poverty. It needs to create uh, planned poverty. Like we call it planned obsolescence, planned poverty. Because it's it, all in a debt-based paradigm. Mm-hmm, and once exactly. the SARA and JASARA get implemented and you've got like um, uh, replicators and whatnot, then you don't, you're not living in that paradigm of scarcity. You know, it's going to completely shift how we think. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. And that, that's the thing. We need to shift the paradigm away from, and we need to take really into account that, you know, we may need justice and for these things. Like why did, for the last, like for everyone who was unfairly punished about debts and credit scores and things like that, that maybe some kind of reparations is needed, you know? Well, I know that uh, we are slowly getting some of our money back, unfortunately, thanks for the them they're just dripping it to us but um yeah <laughs> I know, right? hey i got my computer i mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um you know they're, they're just dripping it to us slowly but there's a lot of our money that is that should be owed back to us right. for all the fraud that they did um like the strong all man. i know yeah you know so like it, you know that million right and <laughs> i know the end of the day i mean we were not supposed to live like, you know, $800 a month and expect us to live off of that, for example. And there's no way that it would take care of you. You know, the job system, the work system, was, and they want you exhausted. They want you to work like crazy, have very little, and just be absolutely exhausted and have no time to enrich yourself, you know, make yourself grow, be able to pick who you want to be, be able to decide what you want to do with your day. And so that, that's, you know, the negativity, everything has been a counterclockwise polarization negativity system. And now we're trying to shift it back into a clockwise positive system to where we start feeling more, um, and you use the term enlightenment, if you will, we start feeling more that we have time to be ourselves, decide what we want to do with our time, what do we want to enrich ourselves with? How do we want to grow? And so uh, the, the polarity and everything and the way of thinking is slowly changing to that direction. Guys, I got to hop off, but thanks so much for having me on. Thank you for and, having uh, Thank you. Have a good rest of, uh, of the call. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming Thank on. You. Bye. Later, Gators. Good seeing you, Doctor. <laughs> awesome. No, I absolutely agree about that. Like, so the idea of what we're working for and how we work for it needs to be deeply examined and everything about our society kind of has to be rewritten because most of our society, truthfully, is merely service jobs and functionaries like management and and things like that, uh, safety officers, for simply keeping the lights on quote unquote yeah. in a society like you know there's no real fostering of that kind of personal uh independence and worth inside a community the community is valued the people have to keep it running regardless if they're given any dignity in that task um i think there was a very strange symbolic gesture to kind of like praise frontline workers this year due to the, the quarantine and you kind of saw at that moment how weird it was that we would have to recognize and give thanks to the people who made our society possible mm-hmm. yeah, I was one of those the who... ones that broke it down in the first place you know they broke the, yeah. they i mean they kept us indoors and everything well, and stuff they they did all yeah, the that... uh you know, they, I mean, the, the whole stopping. And the those are not yeah. one of them, uh, wants to pick up cash in a society, for example. No one wants to have to mop the floor at a Burger King lobby. You know, like that's something that when they do it, like, you know, that society almost punishing them. Realistically, it's society almost punishing them for having a low class service job. But then this kind of hollow, like, oh, we thank you for, you know, being a hero, an unseen hero, that was like, it was so surreal. Well, from the uh, box companies, you know, 
Well, it's like the job that I do as a caregiver. I mean, we're barely above minimum wage, yet we're giving people mm-hmm. baths, feeding them, taking care of people's parents or handicapped people that, you know. That's it's what ridiculous. I'm saying is that, yeah, that people yeah. have to, people rely mm-hmm. on these, on, on ourselves. We rely on ourselves to keep our society running. We get no reward for it. We get no real uh, majority stake in it. We have no say in it. We have no real access to the, like I said, 99%. Versus the one percent, and right this year with the COVID outbreak, when the one percent said, "Hey, ninety-nine percent, we're going to take most of what you do every day and just, you know, remind you that we control it through our policies, but we're going to thank you for for continuing to take our shit, you like know, continuing to down. be our slaves." Thanks for working, fuckers. <laughs> exactly you know it's like it, it's <laughs> like if you had slaves like you had real human slaves and then you decided to throw them a birthday party for being good slaves <laughs> yeah <Right. laughs> yeah and, and your opinion of the entire shutdown oh my opinion of the entire yeah. shutdown was absolutely this was the new world order is ritual everything's a ritual right yeah and this was some kind of elaborate fucking uh spell this was some kind of elaborate uh attempt at at channeling intention and energy and using us as puppets literally telling us where we could not and you know go and be um it's it's just the level of control you know that if if you really had total control you would make people like jump on one leg and, and ridiculous things like that, you know, like yeah. the idea of wearing a mask in public or the six feet distancing, uh, the adult swim, I watch adult swim uh, almost every night as a habit. Um, they have the 666 six, six commercial. It's six feet apart, six is in nature. And it just keeps showing the number six. And you're like, wow. I get it. This is something, this is something deeper than any real logical reason for doing this this is not a realistic thing this is like a fucking game right you know like there's no real reason why the rules of a game are the way they are it's just simply to create it's something fear. An it's experience. Fear. Yeah. the experience. one thing is fear yeah. because the, there was no law to really shut down the united states that was just some rule that was made up the whole social distancing was a rule that was made up and yep. upon the mask, there was another rule that was made up. And even when the governors, even the states that had the governors that said, mask, I will not make it mandatory. I will let the people decide. Well, then the mayors or anybody in other positions, uh, what was the, um, what the other, uh, not the CDC, what was the ones that, are, that's one of them. But w- the, w- the WHO? No, the ones that are in charge of your business, um, like the restaurants and stuff. Talking what about the, the Department of Health? Yeah, Department of Health. They were, they were using them to scare everybody and saying, if you don't have everybody wear a mask and stuff like that, you don't put up the plexiglass, we're shutting your business down. Mm-hmm. We're not letting you open up. You yeah, know, there's, Nobody there's could really, be... really say, say, well, you know what, this is my business. Uh, you, I'm gonna put a sign up there and said, look, mask is optional. If you wanna wear it, fine. If you don't wanna wear it, fine. We'll still do business with you. If you had that kind of leeway, you were gonna be shut down. Well, there's going to be a massive surge of lawsuits. That is undeniable. That Yeah, especially the, the people that uh, could have taken hydroxychloroquine or any other types, I'm sorry, the any other types of medicine um, well, if there's yeah. people I was that could have been saved. About the restaurant. Oh, no, I was talking yeah. about the restaurants. That yes, no, you're right. Absolute uh, millions of of independent small business owners across the country were forcefully shut down by federal government bureaucrats and state level government bureaucrats with yeah. no no realistic or scientific reason why it was absolutely out of mass hysteria and. Right. Um, you know, as time goes on, as the things cool down, there's going to, like, there already is a lot of lawsuits being aimed at Como from New York, the governor there and the state there yeah. um, as an entity. 
And, you know, like pretty soon you're going to see massive class action lawsuits because this, this is going to have ramifications. This is going to have a big shockwave when two thirds of your nation almost went without work for a full year. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's not also going to be dealing with violations under color of law. Depri- well, deprivation of rights under color of law, where they're making rules uh, out of fiat versus through the proper legislative procedure. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like um, that. They already tried to pass things like you can't sue the government for a full year, things like that. And it, I was actually surprised that it's gotten so far. I'm actually surprised that the country has been so quiet during all of this. I thought there would be mass resistance when it first happened, and it turns into a game of um, of monkey see, monkey do, and the sheep, you know? Or, I'm or sure just it's got to be... Fucking... Well, I mean, just for an example, the Mormons. One of the things that they believe in is upholding the law to the letter. Mm-hmm. Yet, no, it's just here they are running the around with face diapers being told, and I'm sure that they're being told over the pulpit, listen to the prophet, mm-hmm. he knows well, and he's going to say, oh, well, yeah, let's just be safe so we can all go to church and the government will tell us what we can, what the crap? I mean, living here, seeing that, I'm just like, everyone's wearing face diapers, and mm-hmm. maybe you'll see one person out of 15 or 20 not, which one, I, I refuse to wear it. I will not comply. Yeah. And if you arrest me, please do, because I'm going to sue your fucking ass. That is against my rights. It's against Nuremberg code. And it is just like you guys said, it has never been put into a law. So forcing people to do something, you know, the Nazis required compliance too. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. Yeah, well, they wouldn't, uh, the cab drivers would not mm-hmm. let me take the cab unless I wore the mask. It's just total bullshit. I mean, they literally, they literally would not. Um, wow. You know, give yeah, my husband it's a not ride. The company I mean, yeah, that it's not is, the company has a but legit policy. It's the people that are enforcing all need to the stand policy. Up. So these well, no, they're it's afraid. Well, they're businesses. afraid they'll lose their job, they'll lose their businesses because there's somebody standing over their head with a clipboard saying, "If you don't, you know, comply." Well, they really with believe this, in this stuff too. That's crazy. Yeah. People, people Absolutely really believe crazy. in this, and it makes like okay. So, um, we have a store called H E B. It's our department store, right? It's our grocery store. And when you go in there, first of all, there's three or four employees standing guard with their masks on. And remember, this has no official policy that you need to wear your mask. Right. As soon as you go in there, there are signs saying mask is mandatory. You can still walk in and shop with that one. Mm-hmm. You can proceed to check out. Yep. The cashier will tell you to stand back and be behind Pepsi glass with a mask on and gloves as they touch your food. And, you know, the same thing, like, it's it's not like they're going to refuse your business, but because everyone socially peer pressures you, like you know, is trying to. As I said, it's a game more of like how. And there's a few places are. There's a few places that are like the local library here. They've kicked my son out because he came out of the bathroom and didn't put his mask on. They kicked him out in the cold for two hours. I couldn't get him. I'm working, which is BS. I'm like, that's a twelve year old getting kicked out in the cold by himself. When he Mm -hmm. could be studying in the library. And then, like, Walmart's another one. That is a huge motherfucker. I've gone in Mm -hmm. and they're handing you, you have to wear this. I hung it on my ear. And she's, you need to put that on. I'm like, (laughs) I've got it on. And she's like, put it Mm -hmm. over your face. I was like, nope, love you, peace. And I just kept going, but they couldn't do anything, even though she's barking at me. I was wearing it, it was on my ear. I do. I actually wear my mask on, I wear my mask on my wrist. I have it hanging (laughs) on my wrist. Cause I told her I was wearing it. You got you know, your face diaper. Like, are you gonna put it? Yeah, you gonna put it on? And I said, <laughs> I, I do. I have it on. That you know. And I said, <laughs> and she's like, oh, you, well, you need to wear it in the store. And I said, thank you. And she rolled her eyes and was like, okay, there was something more I could do about it. You know. Right. Other well, than that, I my like responses that, are, you know, I tell people that my blindness is not contagious. You know, right. those are the only responses well, I give. It? One of the things that I, I, I've been, I like to snarkily remark, but it's actually kind of honest at the same time, is they're like, do it. It's the law. And I'm like, show me the law. Where's the law? Where's mm-hmm. it stated? Because yeah. everybody's been trained to believe that an executive order is a law. It's not a law. If it, if it was signed by the legislature, go right ahead. But a governor can't make a law. A judge mm-hmm. can't make a law. 
exactly. No, and you know, the same thing is with the TSA too, or with mm-hmm. um, any of these. Like you know, that's how I kind of started with these. Like there's they're just to try to like you know oppress you, and it, there's no mm-hmm. real justification for it legally. It's just people's desire to try to like overpower you or to uh, make you submit to their will. And you're right, like the company can always disavow anyone who goes over the line, but people, when they go to work, are encouraged and are encouraging themselves to be the watchdog, to be the sheepdog. And you're right, if, say, for example, you ethically reviewed it, these people are, are sinning. They're not sinning in the way that you, you know, think, but they're hurting other people. You know, and One that's thing- what they got the world to do is they got people to start acting like, you know, <sighs> prison wardens and things like that to try to get people mm-hmm. to follow policies which they didn't create for reasons oh, they that- don't understand. There was a uh, there was a uh, uh, philosophical uh, paradox that was the, the dice that was very similar to that, uh, and it's a. Uh, you have an, I think it's an octagon shaped prison, right? Mm-hmm. And you can see every person on the watchtowers in each corner can see each other, okay? The pentagon. I think an octagon, but basically what happens is the that Panopticon. everybody is there. Yeah, I think the octagon. It's, it's yeah, everywhere. the panopticon. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, where everybody kind of is watching each other's back and mm-hmm. basically creating a fear circle of making a the whole a cycle of fear the entire time mm-hmm. and it becomes something that um whether or not official authorities are watching you your own policing of your actions is what's ultimately going to keep you in this prison is your is your mm-hmm. is your um lack of control fear. over the situation yeah mm-hmm. um it's a well, that's the same thing with the math thing. You had people on Twitter, all the influencers, all of the, the you know, okay, so no one called the BLM out or any of these police violence protesters, these Antifa protesters out on their lack of mask wearing or their proximity or violation of curfews or quarantine rules. Mm-hmm. It was politically motivated and targeted towards people specifically to incite rage and demoralize individuals who are more independently motivated more independently orientated not necessarily republicans or or anything but people like libertarians Mm -hmm. you know like i mean specifically i think it was to target libertarians because i also noticed that jamie uh jamie but um lisa kennedy montgomery um a very famous libertarian uh pundit was taken off mainstream media the entire lockdown almost Mm -hmm. it only reappeared after the election yep i um i I know i had an experience at uh work when uh i was one of those uh essential workers Mm -hmm. um and we had and and i work in a uh, grocery store in the area and uh um I had a customer walk into the store without a mask and I had several people panic. They're like, oh, he has a mask. He doesn't have a mask. What are you going to do? And I stated, um, I cannot do anything and command them to do that because they pro- they potentially can have a health issue. And by HIPAA standards, I'm not allowed to do that. Oh, don't even get me started with the idea of HIPAA standards where, all right, so in other states, it's different. I understand that you might have the luck and privilege of coming from a state where people have common decency and intelligence. In Texas, no, no, I've yeah. had been refused jobs because I've had epilepsy and confided mm-hmm. to them like, oh, well, I, you know, take medication for epilepsy. And mm-hmm. well, we, we're not going to risk it or, or even yep. like, and you're like, like, it's not legal for you to discriminate. And, but no, what's illegal on paper is not what's in human hearts and what humans exactly. are are incredibly unethical um shallow uh you know just just brutes or something by the system though oh oh yes i can always say that they're not truly to blame that the system has made them coarse and harsh but like um 
the fact that people would not immediately jump to being little capos, little little um, uh, Stanford exper- prison experiment type guards in a situation where you give them a slight amount of authority in a situation. You know, after having been pushed around all their life, having having literally nothing to live for, when you, when you really think about it as a pawn in society, um, you know, having all your dreams basically deferred and then and then getting the chance to tell a, you know, person to wear a mask. They jumped at that chance. They jumped at that chance. So and a lot of people just they don't have a conscience like you and me do like, you know, you and I like, that's what I'm saying. You had a very intelligent reaction to that situation. Most people would have screamed at the guy to get out. Oh yeah. That, that, that's actually how a lot of it, there's actually, when you deal mm-hmm. with uh, training at, uh, they always talk about how you have to do what's best for, you know, companies like all, like all companies are like, do the best with the company. You got to do this. You got to do that. And I'm like, Okay, why? What, whatever happened to common decency and respecting a person's ability to voluntarily d- interact? Or even the person's ability to think for themselves and make their own decisions. Right. Mm-hmm. In a way, you can almost say that right now, cosmically, Earth is being tested to see if we will accept sovereignty for ourselves or if we fall back on authority. And we're seeing that the literal split is right in front of us like we're playing it out there's no uh intellectualizing it we're having to actualize it right do you follow authority or are you a sovereign being you know um and many have said in a lot of the historic and the uh, advanced alien stuff the reason that we're allowed to be ruled over is because we allow this stuff to happen because we act this way and that's kind of i think what's happening is the cabal is making last push to say, well, look, they want to be ruled. See what's happening. Everybody wants to wear a mask. They want to be told by authorities how to live their lives, how to inject themselves full of stuff or take medicines rather than take care of themselves. They want to be led by military. They want to be led by government. They don't want to make their own decisions about their lives. They want somebody else to do it for them. Therefore, they're not cosmically adult enough to handle their lives, so they need us. Well, Uh, like, okay, so people forget that this country and the communities that we lived in were ripe with mental illness, abuse, uh, you know, just plain unethical behavior within families for generations. There's, like I said, there's society has made them that way. Society has made them so traumatized that they, they live in perpetual fear of any authority figure and they think that things like the president of the united states affects them personally like i think uh the world was driven i guess the country was kind of driven into kind of a mock frenzy during the impeachment and they rode that way uh the, (laughs) the, the, the 2019 one Oh, the 2021, the one where they had the trial before yeah, COVID? The, the 2019, before COVID, exactly. They rode that wave of divisiveness and of like authoritarian um, identity politics straight into all of this. This was all like a, like a longer timeline than we want to think about. And in fact, if we look at the medical mm-hmm. history, they knew about COVID since uh, the fall, November of last, of 2019. And so they oh, could have please. easily positioned themselves to create the phony impeachment. Well, and when was it that Fauci had admitted that during the Spanish flu that the face diapers were causing more deaths than the actual flu? So right oh, there was, shows the incompetence that he's got on top yeah, of just the garbage study. that he's doing. What's that? There was his, his company did the study on the whole thing, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the what? whole face mask thing is not new, too. That was the Spanish influenza, uh, where they were walking around was... with signs saying, wear the mask or go to jail. Right. It says, yeah, um, there's a, somebody that wore a sign, and it says, uh, wear a mask or go to jail. That's the Spanish flu, California, 1918. Now, they don't have the authority. That person did not have any legal authority to say that or, or, or any ethical footing to say that. It was simply a scare tactic, right. a terroristic tactic. Yep used by citizens to control other citizens. The same thing with the temperance movement. 
there was no ethical debate. A woman just came and started chopping kegs with an axe and then, you know, like <laughs> in, inciting a riot, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, like this is the yeah, world. That's... Exactly. Like, there's not a, it's not heroic. It's, it's, Police. yeah, it's, it's terrorism. Like, yeah, it's terrorism. It is terrorism. And I know that sounds crazy that's... because you're like, um, See... given the impression that America is not a terrorist nation, America <laughs> is full of terrorists. That's why I just find it interesting how we you use the word terrorism when we think it's just this foreign concept, but we don't actually use the word terrorism even properly in, 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 in general conversation. If you are inciting fear, you are inflict, inflicting terror. You are a terrorist in that aspect. Yep. You're not you're not going to be killing somebody, but terrorism just means to inflict terror upon somebody. No, I, oh, I'll give well, you well, there you go. I guess you, a lot of people are going to be doing the haunted houses or during Halloween time. <laughs> well, no, I'll oh, give you a, a perfect I mean, example I'm of sorry. domestic terrorism. <laughs> a father yells at his son at the top of his lungs for correcting him in in front of his like you know new wife or something, or like you know in front of his siblings, like. To demonstrate mm -hmm. his own authority, he will commit a traumatizing act on their on his own child, his own son, um, purposely trying to inflict some mental trauma on him, right? To to make him submit to an act of terror, you know, a mm -hmm. threat of violence, or maybe even the reality of violence, and and to create a type of submissive mental puppet. You know, as was done to them, probably as what they think is discipline in a home. That's terrorism. Mm -hmm. exactly. It's, that's, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That the idea of 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 ethically rejecting terrorism and domestic violence, you know, it starts at the home, and so you start easily seeing that when people are raised in our nation mostly by th threats and fear of violence that it becomes the only discourse between uh, the individual and power. And that's why you start seeing a lot of things like uh, the love of abusers, the love of uh, like fascism. Stockholm Syndrome? Yeah. Yes, it's Stockholm yeah. Syndrome. Oh, and it's reinforced and everything. I mean, just think about how many people love sports. <laughs> the idea exactly. that there has to be one winner and everything. Right. And can't just exactly. Exactly. In a game. It, it starts creating the entire dialogue of what's right and wrong and, and why is it right and wrong. And um, I know from my own personal experience dealing with like narcissistic uh, personality types in my own like parentage and stuff like that, it becomes something of uh, brainwashing. It really is like, it's, it's like individual brainwashing. So um, I really kind of shudder to believe or to kind of think what the children of this generation will be, this children of this new decade who are going to be born under lockdown, who are going to be born under systems of like social distancing and things like that. And their faces really shoved sad. in computers. Yeah. Shoved in a map first able, and then shoved in the computers. They're not going to understand interpersonal uh, relations yeah. whatsoever. They already don't. <laughs> I know, but I'm saying think, that they're going to, that just makes it even worse. I think there'll be a great uh, drop in the birth rate. I, I really think that there is a a push to fulfill that that uh, Georgia Guidestones uh, promise to try to depopulate the world. And I think mm -hmm. that they're going to try to do that through sterility, and they're going to do that through to really making nations and of of hundred of of Asperger uh, type incels. Like there's going to just be a complete sabotage of communities in which people who are should be learning valuable life skills never get the opportunity to do so. Well, that's the same thing with the face typers. You know, we were taught mm -hmm. to look at people's faces for, you know, empathy and, you know, we're supposed to stand close to each other for connection and things like mm -hmm. that. So even on a, um, a personal level, they take all of that away. And, you know, there's this more of a synthetic uh, AI robotic like behavior in children. Now, I, and I have no intention of allowing my family to fall for that. So we're doing everything we can to keep those, uh, the, what I call the, the bad guys teachings out of the house, you know, mm -hmm. as much as possible and not allow it to integrate. And a lot of people are so willing to integrate into their family. They're 
even making face diapers, for example, an accessory. They take their kids out to the store and say, oh, buy one of your favorite cartoon characters and things like that and own uh, one to match each outfit and things like that. There's just all this programming and it, the kids get excited about that sort of stuff and not realizing the entire ramifications of it yet. They're just not taught that. That's one of the terrifying things about humans is how easily we normal, normalize anything. Yeah. <laughs> Within one generation, we can make almost anything normal. That's what I'm saying. I'm also saying that, um, and, I, and I'm just going to kind of pull off track just a little bit, how uh, they say that we're not ready for this or that we are, you know, we scare too easily. You know, the famous saying that they say, well, we don't want to upset the population. We don't want to scare everybody. You know, people can't handle this, whatever it is. Uh, for example, like uh, UFOs or things like that, and bring out ETs or whatever, and they say, well, the, it would just scare everybody. They can't handle all that. It appears to me that our species adapts very quickly. Look how fast we got into face diapers. Look how fast we got yeah. into social distancing. Look how fast we got into being stuck, staying at home. Mm -hmm. Less than four months, we actually got used to it. We got yeah. used to all these phases. So... You know, I don't think we have a lack of being able to adapt to our surroundings or our reality whenever it changes. That's just my opinion. I think we're a lot stronger than that. We are. And are I there? think the government stands and labels us that we scare too easily and we get rattled up too easily and they're trying to protect our psyche, if you will. No, they're not. If they were trying to protect our psyche, they wouldn't have thrown us into this mess that they did. Bingo. Another thing that needs to be really kind of noticed is look how fast companies were able to market this. And I mean, yeah, yeah. they had their, they had their, they had their marketing, uh, you know, posters and commercials out the next day. That means that yeah. it was a coordinated effort it prior to totally this occurring. Planned. I mean, all, all, I mean, to get all this stuff printed would take weeks, months, even in some cases. People don't think there, of stuff like that. It's really and, sad. I, mean, I worked it, it, at a big it, it, factory that produced uh, food, and within a week, they had orders from all the major companies like Walmart and stuff in for the the end the pandemic. A week after it happened, there are already companies ordering like two times as much pro uh, production from us. I mean, like the coordination was really with the, there. There was a there was an issue right now with uh, manufacturers because I'm. Uh, we're de we're dealing with a situation where we don't have supply. We're having a hard time getting supplies, and the are constantly getting uh, removed off the orders. And from what I understand, uh, there is supplies, but they're not allowing it to be distributed, causing a for uh, for scarcity. Yeah. Yes. Creating artificial scarcity. Crazy. I mean, everything allowing so Like it's for instance, all, like Lysol yeah. wipes. Like Lysol wipes should not be that difficult to find. Right. Um, there, I mean, it was very hard to find, uh, not to find a certain uh, type, you just pick it up. Now, all of a sudden we have this scarcity, like all of a sudden you can't make it at all. Like how did that happen? Yeah. I mean, yeah. All of you run through, that it, programming, it, that, that programming, look at the, look at, uh, all the social medias that are still open. People are <laughs> proudly showing off their new face typers. The minute they get or a brand new paper. one, yeah, yeah, and all that. <laughs> there you gotta you go. have your shit tickets. Yeah, yeah they just I mean, was... show the stuff off like a trophy. Well, I think a lot of it too, like the commercials that were that were made um, within the months following the pandemic. That's not a a a quick thing to do. This this had some pre warning. This had some premeditation. And it showed you where the priorities for these companies were. Mm -hmm. They were into creating public images and, and public relations rather than actually, you know, like standing up for anyone or standing up for the status quo. So really think about it. this was a new world order agenda that was fulfilled by the corporate masters of the majority of America while America was losing jobs faster than it ever had before. You know, you had corporations telling us that everything was going to be all right. Like, how absurd is that? That we should, that our saviors were the system that basically failed us. 
problem, I, reaction, solution. Yeah, like I, like I, I, say say I know New Jersey, we've lost uh, one third of all private uh, small businesses. That one third of the entire economy is never coming back because of this. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And look like, how proud they are with what they do. Look, rumors. Have mm-hmm. you seen the commercials now? The TV shows that are out there now, mm-hmm. all slowly making mask the new norm. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's also like a social the, distancing the, the new norm. Like uh, Nancy Pelosi and things like that, um, trying to to champion, like position themselves as champions of people and as being progressives and like having a connection to the everyday person. Well, okay. it's clear that they are not working in our best interests. It's it's mm-hmm. a formality to include us in any kind of conversation involving the future of this country. Also, also, get... also, Congress got rid of gendered words. Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. don't get me started on that. <laughs> so crazy. I was just saying, you think about the amount of money that we throw tax wise into these the CDC and the WHO and all these companies. I mean. Billions of dollars. If you looked at it on a personal budget level and you spent that much of your income on something that was supposed to get a return and their return was uh, the stuff that a high school uh, nurse could tell you to do, wear a face mask, stay away from people, wash your hands. And nobody was mad, like how they could fragrantly spend our money and not give us the services that when we need them, we're supposed to be there. And yet nobody gave a shit, Mm -hmm. you know, like that level of complacency is terrifying. I, I, think. I also like to point out the CDC was an absolute no-show. Yeah, they dropped the ball so bad. The <laughs> CDC was an absolute no-show. Well, that people thought the CDC was going to be this. And I think it's it's strange because they're so prevalent in all this New World Order apocalyptic uh, type fantasy, you know, FEMA death camps and stuff. And, and you know, the, the it's like 9-11. Very- there was no national emergency warning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, Dur- we have like Dur- Robert Dur- Redford, who is the director of the CDC. He's connected with uh, Dr. Fauci, and that they were partners in the NIH when the AIDS pen- the AIDS epidemic came out. Oh, this is just a repeat of the AIDS hysteria. To be honest, there's there's yeah. very easily That's accessible like. um, articles and 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 stuff from magazines and newspapers where the same things they're talking about now were talked about then. Almost yeah. verbatim, almost verbatim, that's including. What I, that's why I say rinse, lather, and repeat. They just keep doing it over and over again. Right, they're a one-trick pony, which is why we can catch them as long as we're awake, because they're never going to stop doing what has always worked for them. That's the so thing funny. is, though, to be honest, I know uh, it's it's weird because you say when you're awake, you're very cognizant of what's important in these important issues. AIDS was a yeah. very important issue, socially. And, you know, uh, with the idea of big pharma being heralded as like, you know, can they find the cure? Oh, can we, do we put the people who have it into camps? Like how will society survive this, this massive disease? And then you're right, it, but it was 30 years ago and most people are not aware of not able to keep memories that long, not able to keep any working memories or even long-term memories that right, are long and- 20 years i remember i remember uh listening to an interview with uh dr uh, judy mikovitz mm-hmm. and how she and her team was able to develop a treatment for uh aids and she was actually uh banned from publishing the uh the doc the um the mm-hmm. paper because it would damage uh the credibility of the cdc uh as not as not creating cures, they're not the CDC put not in the business of making cures. They were in the pro- business of creating treatments. Right. They should be audited just in the fact that since the AIDS came out, they've we've funneled trillions of dollars into trying to solve it, and nothing has come from it. And there's no there's accountability actually a for any of it. There's actually yeah. a patent on it. There's a cure actually for a, it. yeah, the cure for it already exists. It's it's a, patent. It's it so was sick. um everything was. Every illness that we have came across, as far as I know, has been literally engineered from scratch with the cure attached to it. And it was up to them whether they wanted to cough it up or not, which is very sick in my opinion. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, it's, 
and a lot of people I those just, that are asleep has trouble believing that a majority of her illness was lab made. It had a cure well, to what? do it, and they had every choice to use it. They didn't want to, and if they did come up with a cure, you had to pay through your nose to get it. Well, let's, well, let, let, let's look at let's make a let's see a, let's use a modern example, and that's going to be I'm going to use uh, COVID just because it's fresh mm -hmm. in everyone's mind. Uh, they talk about oh, it's a coronavirus. Well, coronaviruses are relatively common. They're common the, cold. It, the common the cold. common cold. Yes. Yeah, and so they weaponized basically they weaponized the common cold, and they made it sound like there was this humongous boogeyman, which it's not. I mean, most people can get over a, com a common cold within a week, if that. If if that. Yeah, I mean, that people are already talking about <clears throat> the the funny fact that most of the world probably already caught it and was able to develop an immunity, you know, the antibodies for, and so they're already saying that yeah, it has a ninety nine point nine percent survival rate. But but the thing is, though, the transmission rate is what we're trying to stop because of our vulnerable populations, the elderly. They already said children are not affected by it at all. So there's no reason why a child should even be concerned about no. this. So the school's right. closing down. It makes absolutely zero sense. As a lot mm -hmm. of the actions being taken make zero sense even by the own... Even um, making the kids wear the face diapers. Oh, all the way to infant, um, mind you. Exactly. Making infants and stuff wear the face diaper and like the idea that um, that you know transmission rates are affected by like restaurants or movie theaters you know like like that's just nonsense that makes really me has... wonder what the studies are going to be in the future on how many people mm -hmm. are going to have worsened problems because one thing i noticed when i was being forced at work until i stood up for myself for about five months i was wearing that damn face diaper at work my mm -hmm. asthma has increased it's gotten worse and mm -hmm. i actually had improved i had copd since i was a teenager because i had always had so many lung infections and it's gotten worse and where i had actually improved some i'm like what in the actual hell are we doing to ourselves i won't i that's why another reason i refuse to wear that because it has damaged my lungs so yeah, now I have you know, to go back and, and heal it, which we can do. I mean, I'm taking the yeah. cell salts. I'm doing the glutathione. And because yeah. I've done it once before, I can do it again. Like Dr. Bergman says, our bodies are made to heal and regenerate themselves. But we have to do it properly with, you know, keeping our gut health strong so that we can not be inhibiting the COX-1 and the serotonin and the glutathione and proteoglycan, which a lot of those things have to do with the building blocks of our body parts our sinew rebuilding our cartilage being able to fight infection being able to sleep and keep that you know if we can't produce serotonin which is made in our gut no wonder we're so stressed and we can't sleep and we're just like everyone's oh yeah and a lot of things like that like i remember 2017 was like when i became really conscious about medicine and my health and i worked at a hospital as a sanitation engineer and you know people would let their children play on dirty hospital floors. The hospital would just have like, like the hospitals are kept at appalling conditions. MRSA, things like that. Staff would spread almost like so frequently. People would die from, and I kind of opened my eyes to it. You know, 500,000 people die from medical malpractice every year. Exactly. Compared to the coronavirus. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. You understand that in 2018 to 2019, uh, influenza was the number one killer in america and then now we're super conscious and afraid of a particular strain of disease one one type of virus when america's health has been in decline rapid decline uh absolutely the state of our medical infrastructure was rock bottom you would think that a first world nation of like our caliber would have better facilities but they don't it's all smoke and mirrors well, and the it, reason we get cancer and diseases in the first place is because we have acidic pH in our mm -hmm. blood. It's a lack of oxygen. So exactly. if you're wearing a mask all the time, you're getting less oxygen, which means you're getting a lower pH, especially if you're eating processed foods, all on the artificial preservatives, which are all citric acids, which are all Black lowering holes. your pH. Yeah. <laughs> and well, all and of that. Sugar, well, you're feeding the candida because the right. leaky gut the is so out of control. Yep. Yeah. Remember the candida? Uh, conspiracies the, the people who were who were very aware of the candida 
that was from 2016, I believe, and I first heard of the right. Candida. So it's with all the information that people have had at their disposal in the last 10 to 20 years regarding how to improve their health, right. it's very shocking that the New World Order was able to trick so many people into this hysteria. And at the same time, I think, you know what, maybe we didn't reach as many people as we thought we were as conspiracy theorists or as people who were awake, you know, like, like maybe people forgot 9-11. Oh, they forget things very quickly. There's so many. That's why I was like, the never forget, nine, never forget 9-11. I think people forgot. Yeah. Like, if I it's think, not on the media for a long period of time, we'll forget it. <laughs> that's the problem. Oh, so God, yeah. Hmm? Like that's the thing too with the politicians is that I, I by the way I I kind of am gonna go uh, pretty soon once it hits eleven because well and, and we uh, have gone to... quite a while I like to try to keep it it might be a good place to stop and we could pick up another time um, oh, so well. really quick to as we're wrapping up um, mm-hmm. so I know that we've got rumors of war I'm just wanting to make sure that for the listeners that everyone's taken care of so we've got uh, information from. Alexicus that I'll go ahead and put um, below and then rumors uh, do you want me to just link up with your uh, YouTube for the listeners YouTube and Instagram because I kind of hit both uh, both uh, platforms to okay. get my message across because it's easier than just the Spotify link so Instagram right, right. at rumors <laughs> of instinct all one word okay and then um, now, Patrick, did you have anything like if people wanted to get a hold of you at all, or are you just kind of? No, I'm just on Facebook. If they okay, want to find me, they can Facebook. find me on Facebook. I'm just I try to be that approachable guy, uh, <laughs> <laughs> in the way that I'm like an everyday person. Uh, that's you the really way I have been. Awesome. You know, so awesome. And then um, Spielman, I'll have your information as well as Sue, like we've had as usual. For listeners with C4OC Radio Network, as well as Rev Radio Las Vegas, uh, you guys can get a hold of Denny Ray and Stevo. And then for our new listeners with GERN, the Global Enlightenment Radio Network, thank you so much for listening as well. Um, you can get a hold of Daryl or on the Soma Fusion website, um, or excuse me, Soma Fusion page on YouTube is another link that you can go to. So, uh, as usual, thank you so much, guys, for joining me with Heart Mind Expressions. It's been very enlightening, very fun. And we will see y'all next time. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Dr. Chan. And then we'll stop. Sorry, I'm.